Good afternoon, traders. It's Bill Baruch with Blue Mind Futures, and this is the FX Rundown. Now, the Fed released the minutes from their September rate cut meeting today, and most policymakers felt it was reasonable to cut rates due to inflation. Um, speaking of inflation, we have a big CPI number tomorrow. Remember, CPI has been a little bit stronger than expected of late, but if you look back at the PPI number on Tuesday, which doesn't have to be in line with CPI at all, but PPI contracted on month over month headline and core REIT. So just something to think about heading into tomorrow. Uh, again, a big CPI number, and it's been a little stronger than expected of late. The dollar, we've talked about it all week. We've talked about it before into the last week. There's a nice uptrend here. It's a trend line going back to June, still above this. Very low volatility in the dollar, in the euro, and really across the board in a lot of currencies right now. Uh, but 98.30 is really where that trend line comes in. There's a lot of support, even though 98.30, but then a big, big shelf area down 97.5, 97.70. So you're really going to need a bad CPI, or sorry, a weaker than expected CPI number tomorrow uh, to really start breaking some of the trend line and, and shelf support. Uh, a much stronger than expected number could really rev up the dollar. And you, again, you're looking at something that could really move this out above 99 very firmly and set it on a path to 101, even though you're seeing rate cut expectations for the end of this month mount to 80% and really nearly a coin flip to see two 25 basis point cuts before the end of the year. But again, it's all about the dollar relative to its peers. And you're not seeing any traction uh, abroad that's going to make the dollar weaken. Nothing's really strengthening against the dollar. Uh, you have still breaks and fears. Uh, you've seen uh, a, the, the British pound uh, gyrate back and forth, overall slipping a little bit uh, through the day and through the week. Now you have manufacturing, industrial production, GDP, uh, Carney speaks tomorrow, all out of, out of Britain, and that's going to move the pound. Um, you have some trade balance data coming out of Germany. Just so going to be a, a lot of talk. Uh, Brexit, risk sentiment tied to U.S. and China trade. What does that do for the euro? Euro has strong trend line resistance, uh, 110.70, 110.60 area. Even if it gets out above there, there's still 111.5 is going to be a good uh, area of resistance. Same way you had that area of support down in the dollar. So uh, the... the uh, 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 Euro just sort of mirrors it uh, in an inverse fashion. It's exactly uh, why it's about 70% of the dollar index. So keep an eye on all that as we head into tomorrow. And then um, you're seeing some of the safe havens. You know, the gold has traded very well today, um, but it hasn't broken out of a major three star resistance. The Treasury's lost some ground. The yen has lost ground. Um, but the yen, about 93.30, below 93.30, opens the door potentially 92.60. It's tethered to 93.30 here on the day. But what's more important is it's stalled against resistance 94, 94 and a quarter on the week. So kind of got to keep in mind we're in the middle of the range here. So unless you have a really strong belief of direction, um, it, it's Tough one to tough one to play, um, and then we do have some machinery data coming out of Japan tonight, so keep an eye on that. And then for the Aussie dollar, there was that we talked about a miniature uh, bull flag at the bottom end of its range. You have this quadruple bottom, but it, it couldn't really get much going uh, today and, and yesterday, for that matter. We saw tails through both sessions, and that's sort of a weaker sign. So um, right now it's it's quiet, but you really need to see the not the Aussie not only test 68, but close out above about 68.15 in order to uh, start getting going again and solidify a potential bottom. Still a lot of headwinds. Really did not capitalize despite equity markets moving up a bit on U.S. and China trade optimism. Uh, what, what optimism are, is there really there? Uh, very little, and the Aussies showing that. So, uh, and then look at the Canadian dollar. Even though crude oil moved higher today, um, you know the, the Canadian dollar really can't get much going. Better data, housing data out of Canada too. So, um, another wild card is is the USMCA potentially President Trump really pushing to get something done if they can't do anything with Canada, and still the Canadian dollar not responding. At at all 75 is the floor and we're just sitting right there so keep in mind this is a little bit of a, 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 a weak pattern where the Canadian dollars trying to very very minor bounce and roll over so be cautious here if we start closing below 75 give us a call we're here to talk about anything on the board 312-278-0500 thanks a lot